What's up guys, this is Nuru, and I'm finally doing a showcase on the Seraph build right here. My true Seraph build, you've seen me playing for quite a while now, actually. I haven't really doing like, I'm going to like chime on it, but yeah, it's my current mid build. And before anyone says it's LFT nerf, listen, I made the build before the LFT nerfs, okay? Because I knew the day was going to come, but regardless of that, so the, reason, the main concept of the build itself is it's a very aggressive combo oriented build. So a lot of my kit here is meant to help me just help me with combos in general and just like combo them because combos are pretty satisfying to land. I will not lie. So you've probably seen uh, some clips of, you know, the clip of me hitting that crazy combo. It felt pretty good to land. And here are some more pictures of me actually beating some pretty notable players. Granted, I'm still like, I think like negative score for most of them, but just to show that the build can actually work and does have potential to reach top 10 and probably number one as well if I played a lot, but I've not really honestly been playing recently. But yeah, the build itself is a polar opposite of my LFT build. It is a very, very aggressive play style. It is yet to, you know, it's come warranted. So gotta do comments on it. Now for the weapon choice and the enchant, I went true Seraph Spear because I like Spear a lot, mostly for the critical. Critical is just really nice for combo. Pretty satisfying and Lucifer it did inspire me, if you know what it is. And true Seraph Spear because the chip is just really nice to have and it's also the fastest spear as well. So it just feel pretty quick. And yeah, it's just pretty nice. And I want obfuscation as well because I needed some sort of enchant that would help with combos in a way. And these are like elastic. There was solar at a time, but solar got nerfed. It's not as consistent. So these are like elastic or obfuscation or stone. Stone is useless. I have literally no way to guard break or no guard breaks at all. It does offer pressure, but obfuscation is just more pressure with the chip damage itself. Doing like, I think like 3%, which is crazy. There's elastic, but elastic, even with or without elastic, there's literally no difference at all in how much hits I land, how much I don't. So that's also pretty worthless the obfuscation is like a go-to classic enchant and it looks it's pretty subtle too like i kind of like like subtle enchants but use the multiplicity listen okay i can't lower how subtle it is but you know i like kind of like subtle enchants they kind of work with the drip i got the gray color scheme going on but it's really open choice in the enchant oh yeah also uh i want three star damage on the spear too yeah do that make sure you do that however if you would like you can definitely use purple cloud on the build because the purple cloud crit is also pretty satisfying now when you hear that boom in the ground shakes you know what i'm saying that one is pretty nice but for me i'm a I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just stick with spear, so. And now for the oath choice itself, I forgot to say, but this is a gank and a chime oriented build. So it's mainly just an overall build. And the reason why I actually went Star Kunid in the first place and only using my mantra is because it's drippy. I honestly just really go a lot of things because I think it looks nice. And I think Star Kunid looks pretty nice as well. I think it's pretty classic and nobody really runs this. So I feel kind of unique in a way using this itself. And uh, yeah, I only use Celestial Assault because I'll go over when I do my mantra selections and it just helps with combos. Sinister Halo, I use it most of the time it's not really that good it, it, it's good but for me personally no and ascension ascension is just it, it's just it's a gank it's cheese okay it just feels cheese to use and it makes me so it makes me go miles away I can never really punish off it anyway so that's why i'm using these uh only celestial assault here and only the faint version of it all and why i want to start kunrid because i'm um, again like for ganks is really good you just jump so high up it is like you don't wait right i'm not gonna lie now for the build stats this is made by tim and here they are right here on the screen so we're just gonna go over it real quick and go over why i want everything that i did so i wanted a build to have air counter one of the best gank cards in the game and i wanted to have uh, prediction as well and 12 steps ahead and use true zero spear and go star kindred so that's kind of developed this entire build right here so 55 charisma for dating finisher because i don't want them to be pushed away when i flourish i want to stay my unstay my face so i can continue the combo right then i went i wanted to keep i get at least 40 willpower for exhaustion strike which is an all-around just good move for combos especially it looks really nice too on spear like doing like the m1 thing exhaustion strike you know all that so pretty nice i also disbelieve too really good Intelligence, I went 85 pre. I'll go over the talent on why later, but mainly for prediction and 12 steps ahead. Agility, I wanted to go at 60 for air counter, one of the best gankers in the game. I wanted to go, you know, good fortitude to get to the finish and all that. Sadly, I had to pre shrine it. And then, of course, classic strength and money for Star Kindred requiring you to have 40 strengths. And then you can see for the weapon there, I went 90 so I could use True Seraph. So, yeah, a lot of uh, investment, I guess, here. Again, there is no heretic on this build, so but regardless of that, I still do some pretty good M1 damage. So yeah, I kind of sacrificed heretic by going a predi the prediction card, the 12 steps ahead, right? So uh, and if and it does work, I think on any race, I think uh, I went Atrium because I kind of like the human race and the scar is pretty drippy. But uh, Archmage, please patch my hairline, please, thank you, please, 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 please. please. 
And you also see that I also have five vitality, four reduction, and three proficiency. So I'll kind of show the summary real quick. I wanted to make sure I could get at least 500 HP. So I wanted to get enough vitality for that. And then I got four reduction, pretty playable. You know, when I fight people in the event, like what, ten, ten, like six times before I could even event once. I don't know how that is, but it is what it is. So yeah, just four reduction and three proficiency because I do damage. Like my, my ass here hurts. Okay, this is doing crazy damage. That and I have an issue. We'll go over that in a bit, but did a lot of damage, you know what I'm saying? Got a lot of, a lot of good pen too. So yeah, it's basically, you can kind of mix and mass here. I do recommend going as much proficiency as you're comfortable with. So, so you know, you're hurting when you line those com combos, you know, you're doing damage. Now for the build order, it does not matter. It literally does not matter what build order you go. Literally just, just max out what you see pre go one, 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 try and that's it. Just, just do that and you're fine. So there's no like specific, but just go the order that is least annoying. If, if that makes sense, I guess just do that. And yes, this build was made by Tim. So thank you, Tim. Now for the gear that I run, consider this is a gank in shine build. So of course there's a true serif. I do not run Prophet's Cloak. I run a Sorority Commander. Prophet's is just for the transmog, for the drip. I run a God Rule Dover Duster. So I could save some talents. I run God Rule Moonlit Earrings, God Rule Blood for the Mask. Almost glider to helmet is better if you have a god roll, but I don't. So I have basically my god roll con helmet, have god roll imperial boots, and god roll Ishin's ring. Also, yeah, Ishin's ring I go because I don't want fight philosophical set of death, and I think it's kind of fun seeing the damage go crazy on both sides. And I just kind of enjoy it more when I just know like I'm doing crazy damage. Like I know like when I land like my crit or like a nice like four string combo, I know I'm actually doing something. So Ishin's ring, really nice. You don't need it. It is still a net negative for sure. But again, it's just not fun. All fights last. It's just not fun. So the fights lasting to sudden up is not enjoyable. So I'm going to go with Shizu Ring. Kong Clutch Ring, good for gangsters, good mobility overall. Rosen Ring, placeholder ring, because again, you'll see I have a lot of intelligence posts. So might as well just get it. intelligence, um, the intelligence ring. Ring of Pestilence, because I do not have dead gods. Very needed if you don't have dead god. And then a god will confess this charm. We also see that on everything, I want as much posture as possible to max out my posture. Uh, because I mean, why not? You know, I don't like getting guard broke by strong left all the time. So we go yeah, 41 posture plus I have hot blade. Now we're going to go over the talents themselves. So there's a lot of a lot of the basic talents, right? You know, you can check in the link uh, in the build. You'll see all the talents if you're very curious. But I'm just going over like the key things that most people might not know about or not and not have. So first thing single later is the 80 intelligence card. And this is literally just a free song chant. Like song chant, if you check, it gives you 5% pen. I'm getting 6% pen from this for my mantras by just, just getting the card itself. Got to my, my mantras don't really do like a lot of crazy. It's like, I'm not a mantra oriented build, but it's like, my, why not just pick up like a free like trait? You know what I'm saying? So I was like, whatever, I'm going to get it. Why not? That's a card most people don't really know about. New overload as well. So this is what I got 85 in for, and you don't really need this. I honestly got it for gaze and I don't even use gaze anymore. So you can go cheap shot instead if you want. But it's just, you know, might as well just pick it up because the stats didn't really change whether I got it or not. So I just kind of got it. It only helps with one mantra being Master Flourish. And I think that's literally it, right? Yeah, so you don't really need it. But hey, maybe add a new mantra in the future. I could pick it up. I can model like crazy. Who knows? If you get Flash Health Break too, you can mod that too. Condition Runner as well because it is a gank build. You, this is literally just free HP for literally nothing. Like it's just free. So you might as well just pick it up. That's also why you cannot go mercenary boots. And then also pretty, pretty standard. I still go ghost. I like ghost a lot. So, but yeah, everything else is just pretty standard. You can go tap out so you don't need to. I was like, might as well just pick it up because why not? Hoplite, very nice. You're fighting Settlers Boom, just don't move. Just stand still and hold F, take like no posture. Disbelief, very nice. I do have Ardor as well. So yes, I have Ardor. I don't know why you wouldn't go Ardor unless you're a gank. I guess you can go Risen. What else? What else? I guess really it. No, I have pocket bombs. I don't really make bombs. Please add Star Kindred passive. And I think that's about it. So yeah. No, oh yeah, it's true. Air counter. Yes. Air counter is the very, very strong one. This and if you see anyone climbing any wall, do this. You're on them right away. You're literally just on them. And it is, it is so good. It is a crazy good monster for gang. If you don't have this in a gank, you're selling your build. I'm not going to lie to you. Like it's very, very good. I have no clips on hand, but trust me, if I ever do make a gank or maybe like a conquest showcase and just jumping off the wall, you're gonna see me like I'm gonna jump on them like quick. Like it's very good. So if you have any questions on any card, let me know in the comments and hopefully I'll reply. You can DM me, but I get like 50 DMs a day. So if I don't get your DM, I am sorry. Now for the mantras. So the random mantras are meant to be very combo oriented. So we're just gonna go ahead and go in it in order here. So first prediction, prediction is my favorite mantra. It's just my favorite mantra to use in the entire game. I don't care what nerf they do to it. I will always use it unless they remove it from the game. So yeah, 
That's why I want prediction. I kind of like marks it as like the no-go build because I just I just like prediction. So you know that's why I want prediction. Blue gem on that. Twin cleave. You're gonna want to go insignia. This is very good for moon. You can kind of like go behind your block. Use a crit there. It's very very nice. Fainting that into like an M1. It's just it's just a good moving base mantra, and it keeps you in the air of an if keeps you in the air if you uppercut as well so yeah it's just really nice overall have an insignia gem on that exhaustion strike you know just a classic bless gem on that gets rid of your posture and it's really nice to string too and then faint as well now celestial assault the only star kindred move i use because it's just drippy and it just looks pretty cool when you actually land that combo in the air with it so what you're meant to do is whenever you land an uppercut you want to chain it together so you're going to see like when you use a mantra alone there's no like white outline but if i were to m1 m if I were to M1 and knew the mantra at the end of the M1, you see that glow kind of white there. That makes your mantra in a way cast faster. So what you're supposed to do is land the uppercut, then immediately celestial assault, and make sure you fade it so you only do the first slash. If you do both slashes, there's crazy end lag, and you usually get to parry back up. So never, ever, ever do the full two slashes. It will just sell you. Don't do it. Just only do the first one. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for that. And senior gem on celestial assault. One of the cleanest moves in the game, I will not. It's just it's just clean. I got it, it's just clean. Now Master Flourish, the classic blood shim on that. Add as many glass stones as you can right there. So yeah, I see have the max glass one because I do have neural overload. And yeah, just blood shim on that. And uh, for this mantra, you, the more you use it, the more you figure out how to use it. It's honestly just time on task. Like, I can't really tell you how to use it. It's like M1 fin to it, just flourish, uh, just faint in it, go behind your block. There's a lot of ways to use the move, but it is just overall like really good. So yeah, just pick it up and try to learn to use it. Dash. Blue gem on that. Simple mobility move. It's just really nice. Revenge is for the combo, the Lucifer combo. Lucifer put me on. And what you do is you do revenge, run an attack, and then you uppercut, and then you can continue your combo further. So you might see it in the fight that I'll show at the end of the video. But I don't know, it's just a classic revenge. It's just clean. And I gotta give homage to Lucifer, the true spirit demon S. Now for Prawnus Draw, this one is the swap. Oh yeah, I got win gem on revenge too. You can honestly run any gem. But I just do win and not. Now, prominence draw is the swap mantra. You really have like one swap mantra in every build, but you can just swap it for whatever you want. I personally do not like prom draw or flash draw or any move I really put here, to be honest. So I'm just gonna wait for like till I get like a good move that I honestly like all the time. But yeah, right now I just prom draw. I honestly don't even know what to say about this because I barely use it myself. So if you have some sort of favorite mantra, some uh some one attunement mantra you want to use, like anything like that, put it in the prom draw slot. It almost can be whatever you want. So if you want to go right foot spear and do the cleave combo. You can do it. All right, you can do it. Now, for Taunt is the last one, gank build, so of course, but also Taunt is just a net positive. Like, Taunt is just always good to use all the time because both of you take now the same amount of damage. However, they just can't jump. So you find like a Silent Heart or some Gale guy and he goes into a Spectre mode, pop that Taunt, boom, now they just tire. Most of their playstyles just disabled. It's a lot easier to fight them. So Taunt is just, just, just use Taunt. All right, just spam Taunt off cooldown. It's just good overall. It's just good. Now for the drip itself, sadly, I do not have the color codes. However, I can just tell you what I basically did is I just went gray. I went for a gray color scheme on everything. So what I did is I'd go like, like this, I go down all the way and I just kind of scroll up till I found something that kind of worked for me. So yeah, I just went gray, black pathfinder elite, prophet's cloak, transmog, and I think that's really it for, yeah, for the outside. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. Gray halo, gray underline wing. I think it looks pretty good. I kind of like the gray, like old school type of look. Please, devs, if you're watching, please let me like lower the multiplicity graphics. Like they don't have to be so imposing. Oh my god, that's actually like, oh my god. But anyways, it is what it is. Also, one etry and two mainly for the drip. For the, it's the, uh, you know, what I'm saying it's the me race. It's the, you know, what I'm saying race, but. I don't know, Etrian is kind of drippy. It's the main reason why I went Etrian, I'm not gonna lie. Do you want to go for like kind of like a human type of look? Don't want to wear no beast, have some bug Vesperian mask on my face. Oh yeah, and for the bell, it's a gank build. I went Corrupt the Reaper. And yeah, just, you can go any bell you want. Don't really matter, I went standing. Uh, that's about it for the bell though. And now how you actually play the slot. So you got to play aggressive, okay? You're not going to win playing super passive. I mean, you can, but you got to play really aggressive. You got to learn how to really like go behind your block and like spam and faint a lot. You got to spam faint a lot. However, if you are against the light weapon, you're gonna have to slow things down a bit so you can actually react to their M1s and not just have them hit you midway to a cleave because it is very annoying, so yeah. But you play it by just being really, really, really aggressive as much as you can. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. It's an aggressive uh, build. It's not super passive, no tranquil on this, none of that. So you're gonna have to deal with the mantras. Good luck. And last thing, make sure you spit a lot. You have to spam T a lot. That's like basically your main source of healing. You should be using it at least 20 times the fight because spitting is broken and you need to abuse it. And now here's a fight uh, against a dagger user. A bit of my frustration because uh, this is my second time fighting him, guy. And fighting dagger silent heart, it's it's not fun. It's not fun, okay? It's not. 